Okay, now before we get in and start creating our our federated identity pool, we need to actually create our website or create a bucket for our website because we're going to need that bucket name uh, in an IAM role that we need for this federated identity pool. So we're just going to go into the S3 management console, creating a bucket, just going to give that bucket a name and just click on next so I'm, I'm racing through this very quickly because we've we already know how to do this so next again make sure that we have public access on this bu bucket so public read access next create bucket so once that bucket has been created we just go into it and the first thing we need to do is change the permissions on that bucket so we need to have cross origin resource sharing enabled on this and we need to have a policy set up for that the reason being is that our application is going to be on the browser side and it will be accessing multiple domains through that browser so the browser will block that from occurring unless cause is set up so we click on cause and there is already a sample policy there we're not going to use that one I'm going to use one that I prepared earlier Okay, so I just copied and pasted that over from the lab notes. So we can see there we've got get, get put, post, delete. Uh, all of that is going to be allowed for cross-origin resource sharing on this bucket. Once we've done that, we need to go in and upload our website. So we need to, first off, there's a link for the Backspace Academy repository on GitHub for this code. So you just go to that and clone that or download it or if you'd like to work on it and send me some pull requests and you know uh, tidy it up a little bit and make it look a bit more pretty for me you can always fork that and I'll take any any pull requests quite happily for that um, so clone that download it and open that up into your into a folder somewhere and get that ready to upload onto your bucket so just going back in there we upload and we're just going to drag and drop those files across. And again, we make sure that that's public permissions. So grant public read access. And we'll upload that. Okay, so our website is uploaded and all ready to go. So we just go, need to go into properties and enable static website hosting. Again, we know how to do this. Use this bucket to host a website. We're going to put in our index.html uh, file for that. And I'm just going to click on the endpoint to get that open. It won't work because we haven't enabled it yet. And click on save. And go back to the overview there. Now I'm just going to refresh that URL for the website and it should come in. So what's basically happened there is that uh, there is a little bit of a, a spinner image that appeared there. And that's going to be up when the JavaScript SDK is coming into the browser, when it's loading that JavaScript SDK. And it'll only do that once because after that it'll be stored in, in browser memory. And while that's occurring, these buttons will not be visible and the reason I've done that is that because we don't want to click on any of these buttons and have any any attempt at running code until that JavaScript SDK has fully come in. So that's all we need to do for setting up this website. So just going back into the GitHub repository for it. So we've got an index.html file there which has got all those buttons and whatever. We're not going to be doing anything with that with that file. But what we're going to do is, if you look at the JS folder here, there will be an app.js, and that will be a starting point for our application. So we'll have some basic stuff there for the user interface, and we're going to build up the code that we need for using Cognito. But if you're lazy or you've got lost and it doesn't work, you, there is one here called app-final. So all you need to do is rename that to app.js, and you can you can just run it without too many difficulties you'll just have to go in there and change obviously your user pool id your client id uh, you know your identity pool id your bucket name all this sort of stuff 
uh, will need to be changed for you as well, otherwise it won't work of course. Okay, so that's all we need to do now for that. And what we'll do now is we'll create this identity pool. So we just go back into user pools and click on up the top here, we've got federated identities. And it just jumps straight into a getting started wizard. So I'm just going to give that a name. Oops. Okay, so we've got unauthenticated ent identities here so we don't want to allow unauthenticated identities for our application but we could if we wanted to we could have that happen what we want to do is we want to use authentication providers now we're going to be using a cognito user pool to authenticate our our users but we don't have to use cognito we can use amazon login with amazon facebook google or any oauth process that we that we would like to use. We can also use SAML if we've got an enterprise SAML application that we want to uh, integrate in with it. We can do that with Cognito, not a problem. And we can also have a custom one. We can do our own uh, custom auth authentication service. But we're just going to use Cognito, but you can use Cognito. You don't have to use Cognito and you can use all of these. You can have login with Cognito, Amazon, Facebook, the whole lot of them if you wanted to. So it's, it's quite a powerful service from that perspective. So the first thing we need to do is put that user pool ID. So we need to go back into uh, the user pool. So we need to go back into services and then back into the Cognito main console. If I can find it, there it is. Okay, manage your user pools and we'll get that user pool ID. which is this one here. So we want the pool ID, we don't want the ARN. And we put that in there. We also need to grab that client ID of our application. So we just go into app clients and we'll grab that client ID. We'll just copy that over. And that's all we need to do. So that app client ID and user pool ID, they're all different and the the identity ID will be created after this. So let's go and click on create pool. Okay, so what's happening now is that we're now going to be going to the IAM service because Cognito or Cognito ID needs to have permission to access resources on, on your behalf. So we do that obviously for a service through an IAM role. Now we have two roles here. We have one for the authenticated identities and another one for the unauthenticated identities. So I'm just going to keep that, let's have a look at the policy name first. So we're not even allowing un unauthenticated, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm just going to just get rid of that, change it to a different name so it won't give me an error. And I've already used this role, so I'm just going to change this one to a different name as well. Now we need to view this policy document. So just edit. It's going to come up with a little warning saying, well, better read the documentation before you play with this. That's fine. Just expand that out a bit. So what we've got there is a policy that allows whatever service that uh, that, that assumes this role, it allows to have access to mobile analytics for put events to the Cognito Sync service and Cognito Identity service. We want more than that because we want these temporary credentials to be able to access Amazon S3 as well. So we're going to add that to that. So just going to copy that over from the lab notes. Okay, so I've just copied and pasted that in there. So you can see here we've got the same permission that we had before. We haven't changed that, but we've added an S3 service in here. So we're allowing for, we've got two allows here. The first one is to list buckets in a folder within our main bucket. So you need to change this to the name of your bucket. So this one here is Backspace Lab P Coder. You need to change that to the name of your bucket that you just created. And what it does, it allows to 
list buckets within a folder called Cognito and then a subfolder of that called Backspace-Academy. We have another one here that has get, put and delete of objects within again within that bucket and then another subfolder of that called Cognito and then another one called Backspace Academy and then another folder or subfolder of that which is going to be in the name of that Cognito user or that, that Cognito user's ID. And so what that means is that that person can upload or delete or change objects but they can only do that in a folder that is specifically in their uh, their their Cognito ID. And they cannot access any other part uh, for delete or put or anything else on that bucket. So we just click on allow and that's all successful and it brings us back into here with some sample code. So this is for Android. We can have a look at the JavaScript code. It just tells you how to create AWS credentials, uh, which is what we've got there. That's not going to be enough for a user to access, but we'll go into that later on. But what we need to take note of here is this user pool ID, and that's what we use uh, to access or what we use as, as uh, with our authenticated service to access our temporary credentials. So I'm just going to go to the dashboard and there we can see that we have a dashboard that shows how many identities are logging in and what are the authentication methods. So here we've got that user pool, but we might have here a Facebook authentication method and Google or whatever. So those will be lifted, listed up here and how often they're being accessed through those different methods. So now that we've done that, we can look at getting stuck into creating our, our web application that has this Cognito power behind it.